Hey, so in this video, we are gonna go over my motion primitives design add-on, and I'm gonna show you guys how to make this really cool animation. But first, a little bit about the add-on itself. So about four months ago, I released my motion primitives pack, which is 46 unique primitive designs for you to create motion with. Completely royalty-free and free of charge as well. I'm by no means a modeler, and I knew that when I released them, there were some topology issues and things, but ultimately I was really proud of how this came together. For my first project of this type, I was very proud of how things worked out, and I was very happy to use them in my everyday work, and I have since then. Almost every single project that I've uploaded to this channel has featured my Motion Primitives pack in some way, shape, or form. So that's why when this person here, I think it's Tufio, I'm not sure how to say this person's name, when they hit me up on Instagram about creating an add-on for this, I was super excited. When they got a hold of me, they had already created it, and they were just looking for permission to get it out, but me being an idiot, I didn't check my Instagram DMs for about a month, and it was already there and made. They did this for the exact same reason that I released the Motion Primitives pack, which is to make art more accessible. So when they asked me if they could put this out, of course I said yes. I was like, hey, make it free, just put it out, this is sick. And they stuck to their word, they made it free, and now it's public. And it works really, really well. So I'm gonna give you a rundown on how this all works out. Please go check out Tufio's Instagram if that's how they say their name, I'm sorry if it's not. But yeah, let's get into this. In the description is a link to the Motion Primitives add-on Gumroad page. Uh, this is Tufio's uh, Gumroad page. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna come over here, you're gonna go and purchase, you're gonna hit zero, you're gonna hit the little purchase button and it'll send it to your email. From there, go to your email and you should have the files available to download. It's gonna be one singular zip file. Once you have it downloaded, you can go ahead and drag it to your desktop or wherever you keep your add-ons at. Just leave it in the zip file. Fire up Blender and go to Edit, Preferences, scroll down to Add-ons and go up here to Install. Go to where you put the zip file and just double click it. From there, that should install the Motion Locale Motion Primitives. Motion Locale is the name of my Discord, by the way. Uh, you know, just, just a tiny little baby plug. From there, you can exit out of that and hit N on your keyboard. And if you scroll down, you should see a tab down here. I'm not sure if it's called Addy for everybody. If it is, I do think that that's very funny that it's called my name, but it might be called something like Motion Primitives or Motion Locale, whatever. But you just click it and then this little window pops up here. You click on the image and and all of the renders for the available primitives are available here. You just click whichever one you want and click add object. And there it is. Once you have your object imported, you can see that all of the objects are UV'd and they're a little bit more dense than a regular primitive mesh would be. Also, like I said before, some of the topology is not very good. I didn't have a great idea of what I was getting myself into when I started this project, but these are meant to just be the basis for effects. They can even just be placeholders for things. It's just to kind of get the creative juices flowing and you can use them as little background props or whatever. So in total, there are 46 unique objects to be used in your animations that are fully UV'd and ready to go out of the box. Now with all of that out of the way, I wanna show you how you can make this little jittery kind of rigid body animation with these shapes. Just something simple and fun. Okay, so here we are in a project file with all of the motion primitives loaded in, and we're just gonna move them over to the side, kind of keep them out of the way, give ourselves a little bit of room to work. And first things first, we're gonna spawn in a little bit of text. Doesn't really matter what you got going on here. We're just gonna make our say hello. Now that we have our text, we are gonna come here. We're gonna right click on it and go convert to mesh. We're gonna go into edit mode, select all of our faces. We're gonna go E and then we're gonna double tap Z. So that we go straight up and down, just something like this maybe. And we're not super concerned about how bad the topology is with this. It's totally fine. We're gonna set our origin to geometry, get that all centered, and then we're gonna zero out our location. So just press N, open up this menu, and we're just gonna type in zero for everything on our location. So we're gonna spawn in a plane and we are gonna make this just so that it's a little bit bigger than the size of the hello. Maybe something like this will be fine. And we're gonna set it above for now. We're gonna play with the positioning in a little bit, but above is good for the moment. Now we're gonna select our plane and we're gonna come over to the particle system settings and we are going to add ourselves an emitter. Now what we're going to be wanting to do here is making these shapes appear over time and slowly fill up that area like was shown in that animation. So we want these particles to spawn in and then not go away. So what we're going to do is we're going to change our lifetime to something like 300 and then our end frame we're also going to change to 300. This ensures that all of our particles spawn in and they won't go away for the duration of the effect. But you can see we have a problem in that all the particles are falling down. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pause this and we're gonna come over here to our scene settings and we are gonna turn off gravity. This means that all of our objects are kind of going up now, but that'll be fine for the moment. For our next step, we are gonna select all of our motion primitives and we are gonna press M to add to a new collection. And just call it something that you'll remember. I'm gonna call mine cool. So coming back to our plane, we're gonna select it and come back into our particle settings. We're gonna go down under render and instead of halo, we're gonna select collection. That gives us the option to instance a collection and we're gonna select cool. Now you can see we've got one little guy spawning in, but if we press play, 
it should spawn in our whole collection. And as you can see, I'm playing this in real time and there's a lot of lot of objects going on here. And that is because it's using kind of a, a proxy mesh for each one of these. There's either going to be like a little cube or a little icosphere inside of each one of these particles. And that proxy mesh is actually what enables us to have that like jittery glitchy feel as it's filling everything up. Because the little proxy mesh inside of our shape isn't exactly the same shape, it's gonna have some weird interactions and collisions and I kind of liked how this turned out. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna select our plane and we are gonna move it down until it is like intersecting with our text here. And you can see that our starter object there is spawning in on the H for the hello. So we are gonna come down to our particle system settings tab and we are gonna change our seed until it is spawning somewhere that is not touching our text. From there, we're gonna select our text and we are gonna put a collision modifier on it. That way our particles get to actually interact with it. But you can see here, they're kind of just getting caught on it and then phasing through it because they still want to go up. So we're actually going to change the kind of particle system we have here. If you open up your physics tab, you can see that we're set to Newtonian by our default. Let's drop that down and change this to Boyd's. Now you see this gives us a bunch of options, but what we want is under Boyd Brain. We're gonna come down here and we've got a bunch of different options. If you hit this plus sign, you'll see that you have a bunch of options to choose from, and each one of these are a little bit of code that tell the particles what to do. They're pretty self-explanatory. Separate, all the particles go away. Flock means that all of the particles get together to move. And if you have those on together, it means that they will separate and kind of form groups and then move as groups. We're going to leave both of these on for now, but we are going to add follow the leader. Follow the leader essentially says to all of the particles, go to this thing, do whatever you can to get to this thing. So of course, with that thing, we're going to make that our text. So now if you turn that back on, we're no longer flying away and everything's moving towards our center object here. So what I'm going to do is move this plane so that it's a little bit below our text for now. I know we started above, but seeing the interactions again, I think below is probably a good place to start. And you can see we've got a lot of like jittering and flying objects going around. It, I think it looks very cool. Now that we have our camera lined up, you can see we have the basics for the effect going on. We're gonna do a little bit of tweaking. First things first, we're gonna come into our particle settings and for our number here, we're going to change this to something like 5,000. And that is going to spawn in a ton of particles. This might drop your performance a little bit, but it's still going to be basically real time. Once we've got that cranked up, something else I want to change is the kind of length of this platform here. It's a little bit too big and we have particles that are spawning just a little bit too far away. So with our plane rescaled, we are going to change our physics mass to something like five, because I personally think that our physics, they're, they're moving around a little bit too quickly. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually move this down and scale it up a little bit. And then we're going to do duplicate it and move one back up to where approximately where it was before. We're going to change our number back down to 1000. Now in our viewport and in our render, we're going to click off show emitter. That way we can see through to the bottom layer as well. Now what this is going to do for us is kind of fill up our background area much faster while keeping much more condensed and controlled physics close to the camera with the objects we're actually going to be seeing interacting with our hello here. So once we give this a little bit of time, this is slowly going to start to fill up and we're going to get the effect that we're looking for. And maybe we can come up to this top layer and change this to 2000. I think maybe we can turn it up a little bit and kind of play with this. We're not quite looking as full as I'd like. And yeah, this is already looking much more full. However, we are getting more sporadic movements. And the more you add, the faster they're going to move basically, because there's going to be more things for them to interact with. But yeah, that is the basics of this effect. If you're finding that your objects are still too sporadic, you could try playing with the weight, reducing the number of particles that are in your scene, try playing with gravity. You can also try playing with forces, you know, something like a, a harmonic force or just a regular default force could be helpful for this if you want to keep it closer to the lettering. Right now our follow the leader in the Boyd brain is just telling our particles to stay close because our object itself isn't actually moving. If we were to take our text and say move it over here and then pause this and restart things, you would see that they would eventually start making their way towards this object. It's very slow and the particles kind of bump into each other and deter each other from getting to the text, but you can see they very slowly start working their way towards it. But yeah, thank you again so much to Tufio for making this add-on and releasing it for free and kind of keeping the, the spirit of how I wanted things to be alive in this and continuing to make art more accessible for everyone. The links for Tufio Socials as well as this add-on are going to be in my description down below. Please, please, please go check it out and say thank you to him if you have the time. Thank you everyone for watching and thank you to my patrons for making this a little bit more possible and supporting me and doing what I do here and I will see you all again really soon.